Hello everyone, today we'll be playing um, by Neon Bacon. Uh, today we're going to be going through the different uh, Winter VM jam entries. Since the jam has ended, uh, I'm going to try to play through as many as I can during the month of January. We're starting with Heart of Winter. Let me read the plot synopsis before we begin. Uh, this game can be found on itch.io uh, by Nyan Bacon. Synopsis. An old story inspires a young boy to seek the maiden of winter that brings the snow and ice each year to his village. His mother is ill and he believes the maiden may be able to help. Join a young boy on his adventure through the snowy forest to find an entity that can stop the wind and snow of winter. What will she offer him in exchange for his mother's life? So, reading through the synopsis, let us begin. We just double check to see that the frames are okay. Oh, and please let me know if um, if there's any glitching out or frame rate issues. I'm trying to figure out uh, best settings for live streaming. Because even uh, even last time we were having a little bit of technical difficulty. So please let me know if um, there's any screen tearing that sort of thing. Okay, let's begin. Peter blew into his gloved hands to try and keep them warm against the cold. The wind blew snow from the ground into his face, and he had to keep wiping to keep snow from his eyes. He didn't know how long he'd be out here, but the sky was dark and the forest was much scarier at night. Something brushed across his shoulder and he turned around with a yelp to face the overhanging branch. Laden with snow, it weighed more than it should have and bent low enough that the twigs scratched his nose when he turned. I'm going to just change the tech speed a bit. He sighed and turned to look at the path his boots had left. It was dark and he was cold, and he wasn't going to get very far in the dark. Besides, the clouds were gathering up above and if he didn't turn back before it started to snow, he might lose his path back to the village. He didn't realize someone was standing in front of him until he turned around. He yelped and fell back in the snow, star staring up at the girl. She was thin and pale and stared at him with icy blue eyes. Who are you? Uh, um, who are you and what are you doing in my forest? The boy quickly got back to his feet and brushed snow off his pants. M my name P is Peter and uh, I came looking for the Maiden of Winter. The girl tilted her head slightly. And why are you seeking her counsel? My mother is ill, very ill. My father says that she might not make it through the winter, but but the village elders say that if we appease the maiden of winter, the snow will lessen and those people might get better soon. The girl considered him for a long moment. What did you say your name was? Peter? Peter. She rolled the name around her tongue, consideringly, as if tasting a new type of sweet. And Peter, do you know what the Maiden of Winter would ask for in exchange for the season to thaw early? Um, no, I guess I hadn't thought about it, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I don't want to lose my mother. I see. Well, if you're as determined as you say you are, I can take you to the Maiden. Peter's face lit up. Really? 
Yes, the maiden and I are quite good friends. She may not be happy to see a human in her forest, though. I just want to ask. I promise I won't do anything to hurt her. All right, follow me then. She st started into the forest. Peter followed after her quickly. His boots were loud and he felt clumsy compared to how she seemed to glide over the snow. Her footsteps were light and delicate in comparison to his clumsy stomping. Hey, wait. She stopped and turned to look at him. I told you my name. Can't you tell me yours? Why? Well, I want to know what to call you, and it's polite. Savannah. My name is Savannah. Nice to meet you, Savannah. She blinked, seeming surprised to hear her name coming from someone else's lips before smiling softly. It's nice to meet you too, Peter. The two emerged into a wide clearing. In the center stood a tall castle made of ice, dimly lit from the inside by, it, by an otherworldly glow. The ice walls were thick and smooth, like the structure had been carved from a glacier and shined. Whoa. Do you like it? It's so cool. Can we go inside? She nodded. They ascended the stairs to the large entrance doors, and Savanya pushed them open with a gloved hand. Oh, this is pretty. They swung into the main foyer, which practically shone with the moonlight glinting off of the ice structure. This is amazing. It is a massive building. It is hard to navigate if you do not know your way around it, so please do not wander too far. If it's so big, that means it would be great for a game of hide-and-seek. Hide-and-seek? It's a game. One person is it, and they count to ten seconds while all the other players find a place to hide. That sounds like fun. Okay, I can be it first. But that's not fair. I live here and know the place better than you. Oh, you're right. I'll tr hide first then. You wait here and count to ten, and then find me, okay? All right. Savanya turned to face the wall, closing her eyes and beginning her count. Peter ran off, his boots thumping along the door. Despite it being so sleek, he didn't slip, as if it was stone or wood flooring. He hurried up the stairs in the main foyer to the second floor hallway and sought out an enclave to hunker down in. Many of the little wall niches and had ice pedestals with false bouquets on them, and he had to sit behind one of those delicately placed structures to hide appropriately. Eight, nine, ten. Peter listened as Savania's light footsteps wandered around the foyer, then up the stairs. She passed by him on her way down the hallway, and he had to smother a giggle with in his gloved hands. Peter? Peter, where are you? Her voice trailed off down the hallway into one of the rooms Peter had spotted. She was in there for a long time searching before she came back out into the hallway. She stood in the middle of it, within Peter's line of sight, before bending down slightly, so they made eye contact. I found you. Peter beamed and jumped to his feet. In his excitement, his elbow knocked the ice pedestal he had to slip past, and the structure went crashing to the floor. Uh-oh. He looked over in wide-eyed horror as the vase of ice flowers shattered on the floor, and sent glass-like crystals skittering down the hallway and falling into the foyer. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Savania, on the other hand, seemed unfazed. It's all right, Peter, it was just an ice sculpture. Peter looked at her incredulously. But didn't it take ages to make and carve? Of course not, that is part of the Winter Maiden's magic, see? She waved her hand, and a cold wind picked up inside the hall. Peter hugged himself, shivering, and watched in astonishment as the wind seemed to pick up all of the 
fall in pieces and reshape it back to its former glory. Each broken ice piece was picked up and melted back together as if with glue. Within a few... Oh, wait a minute, I need to switch windows. There we go, now it's bigger. Each broken ice piece was picked up and melted back together as if with glue. Within a few moments, the pedestal, vase, and fake flower bouquet had been put together and straightened into its rightful place. Wow, that was amazing! Oh, you think so? Of course I do. No one I know can do that. Have you ever been to the village before? Your ability with ice and snow could help so many people. We keep getting water frozen in our roofs, but if you can just do that and whisk it away, everyone would be so happy. Her face fell. I cannot go to the village. I am sworn to the forest and the maiden of winter. Oh, are you like her daughter or something? In a way. Will I get to meet her soon? I still want to ask her to help my mum. Of course. I promised, did I not? But she will not be available for a while. Could we maybe play a few more games of hide-and-seek while we wait? Peter grinned. Sure, but I want to be it this time. The two played in the ice palace for what felt like hours. Eventually, Peter was too tired to run around, hiding and seeking, and he sat down by the doors in the foyer. I need to get back to my dad soon. He'll be worried. Does he not know you are away? No, as far as he knows, I'm still asleep in bed. And you snuck out? No one in their right minds would announce to the village that they're going into the forest. They'd all be all... Oh, you can't do that. There are wolves, and it's cold, and it might snow, and you'll get stuck, and we'll never find you again. I see. I was hoping I could meet the Maiden of Winter tonight so that I could go back and find my mum better, but I guess I'm just unlucky, huh? Savanya looked out of the open windows at the moon hanging in the sky. I may be able to summon her if you are willing to wait here. Oh, could you? Yes. That would be wonderful, Savanya. She nodded and turned, gliding up the stairs. Peter got to his feet and dusted the snow and ice off of his coat and pants. He needed to be presentable. He looked up at the snow of feet descending his stairs and blinked when he saw Savanya slowly making her way down towards him. She had shed her traveling coat and was in a regal gown that trailed behind her as she walked. Savanya, you're the Maiden of Winter? I thought so. I... yes. She looked ashamed. I thought you said you were her daughter. When the previous Maiden dies, she is reincarnated as herself into a new body. I am all of the previous Maidens, and all future Maidens. That sounds... exhausting. Yes. But why didn't you tell me? You could have healed my mum this whole time. Savanya looked like she was going to start crying. I get so lonely out here. I cannot go into the village because I am bound to the forest, and it is, like you said, no one comes into the forest or never far enough into the forest to find me. This is the first company I have had in decades. I, I just wanted the chance to play with someone. Peter stared. Savanya buried her face in her hands. I am sorry. I should have told you the truth. He quickly reached forward and set his gloved hands on her shoulders. Her, her skin was so cold he could feel it through the fabric. Hey, it's okay. I'm not angry. But I betrayed you. Do you not hate me? I get what it's like to be lonely. 
And if I were alone in a forest for decades and decades, I probably would have done the same thing, just for a chance to play a few rounds of hide-and-seek. She rubbed her eyes. It's not just that, though. Huh? The laws of nature state that for me to save a life, I have to take a life. So to save your mother by lightening the snowfall, I would have to take yours. He felt cold, colder than before. You mean, kill me? No, I- no, I could never. I already feel horrible that I must bring the wind and snow and ice upon your village. I could never bring myself to hurt any of you directly. If you don't like bringing wind and snow, why don't you stop it? I can't. The nature of the seasons is that I must be tireless in my summoning of the elements for three months of, out of the year. Not doing so would be going against everything. Sort of like a chore? Yes, I do not have a choice. So to keep my mum from dying from the cold, you can stay here. Peter considered this for a long moment. I want to give you a choice. If you choose, you can go back to your village, and but your mother will die. Or you can choose to stay here with me, and your mother will live. If I stay here and live with you, my mother will live? She nodded. Then I'll stay. Savanya nodded again. Come then, I will show you and prove to you that I will lighten the snowfall. She reached out for his hand and he took it. She led him up the foyer stairs, then up two more flights out to a balcony overcoming the tops of the pine forest. Hold on, I need to get a drink. Below them were the snow-topped trees, and above them stretched the inky sky. The stars were starting to twinkle out in the wake of another coming snowstorm. The clouds were so dark and heavy with snow that they blended into the midnight sky. I like that mental imagery. Ooh, a new CG. The wind whipped around the two of them and Sylvania raised her hands to the sky. They started to glow with the same unearthly glow that the ice palace cast in the clearing around them. And the wind picked up. Peter gripped his hat and held it down around his ears, watching as snow swept up from the ground and into the dark clouds. They gradually lightened, as if the burden of snow was lifted back into the stratosphere. The glow softened and then disappeared entirely from Savania's hands. Light, fluffy, cumulus clouds were left in the wake of the dissipated storm. A Wolfborg says, hello, I can't hear because I'm streaming Joe show with some friends on Discord, but I got the stream on my second monitor to see the VNs. Cool. At, I'm glad that you can look at the beautiful art by Neon Bacon. Uh, cumulus clouds? Yep, we read this bit. Wow. I will keep the clouds and snow at bay throughout the rest of the winter, and once spring arrives, I will melt the ice quickly so that your village can be warm again. And all I have to do is stay here? We could play hide-and-seek again. He smiled and nodded. Sure, let's play hide-and-seek some more. A 20 years later? Wow, that is a jump! I wish I could do the Spongebob voice. The, the one that Mel Ambrose told me about. Maybe I should save just in case. Peter's arms were laden with supplies as he shut the front doors of what he had come to call home. 
Sivanya descended the stairs quickly, worry written on her face. Did anyone recognize you? Peter smiled and set the bags of spices and food on the ground so he could take her in his arms. Of course not. It's a growing town. New people are showing up all the time. You know I still worry. He placed a kiss on her lips softly. I know, but I'll always come back. You know that. She smiled and bent down to pick up one of the bags. Come, I've prepared for dinner. He picked up the other and followed her to the dining room. A fire sat in a fireplace constructed of stone and sealed into the ice wall. Despite the heat that made Peter shed his hat and scarf, the ice walls and furniture didn't melt. The two sat down to eat with the bread and cheese Peter had procured from the village market, but was interrupted by a thundering knock on the main doors. Savanya's eyes went wide. Why would anyone come this far into the forest at this time of the evening? You never asked me that question when you found me in the forest. The maiden didn't comment. Instead, she moved into the foyer. Peter quickly followed her, less confused and more worried. No one had ever approached the palace since he had arrived. This was a first for him. Savanya waved the doors open, and they swung into the foyer to reveal a mob of people led by an old, angry man Peter recognized as his father. Uh-oh. Oh no. Where is my son? Pardon? The man aimed his shotgun at the Maiden of Winter, and Savanya sucked in a gasp of surprise. The mob shouted at her, raising weapons and torches in a ferocious anger. Peter, my son, my wife said that she swore she saw him in the market today, and he disappeared into the forest when it started to snow. Peter stepped out from where the stairwell hid him. Mother saw me? Peter, get away from her. What? Why? She's a monster. Do you know how long we have spent trying to find the Maiden of Winter so that we can bring an end to her terrible icy rain? Please, it's not like that. And then I found out she's kidnapped my son from right under my nose. She didn't. Her reign of terror ends now, Peter. Oh dear, this is, this is all a misunderstanding. Don't you dare. Peter moved across the foyer, closer to the mob. Savanya watched in horror. I came here of my own accord so that mother would get well and live through the winter. I gave my life to Savanya so that I could save my mother. Savanya has never done anything to warrant your anger. If you had just been willing to seek her out, maybe you could have offered her the same arrangement and saved more people. I would have never willingly given my service to this witch, and neither should have you. He turned his vengeful eyes to Savanya. What do you have to say to yourself? I saved your wife from that terrible winter, and I have kept your son alive. I never intended to hurt anyone with my snow and wind, but I have no choice. Hmm. And you don't have a choice about our fa famines, our ruined crops, our frozen livestock? Savanya made a noise, but couldn't bring herself to protest. After all, she didn't. Peter knew that now. It was a part of the universe, the turning of time that eventually led to the deep freezes that kept his family from raising the, cro the cows through the winter. That's what I thought. Oh no. No. Oh no. Savanya caught Peter's body before it hit, could hit the icy floor. She held him to her chest, gripping him tightly in her slender arms. He smiled up at her, blood staining his lips a hollyberry red. Savanya. Peter, no. No, no, you can't leave me. I was so lonely, and you can't. You can't leave me alone. 
Peter reached up to caress her face with his hand. I'm not going anywhere. I'll just be hiding. Find me, okay? Sivania gripped Peter's hand in her own. Peter. He didn't survive the next minute. A uh, hundred and fifty years later. I'm almost a hundred and fifty. Savanya looked up from where she was staring out at the blowing snow when there was a soft knock at the door. There hadn't been a knock at the door in a long time, and she didn't want to open it for fear of what waited on the other side. The same soft knock persisted again a few minutes later. Savanya slowly got up from her chair. The sigh she let out sent a strong gust of wind blowing through the forest and sent snow flying into the sky. She trekked down the stairs and walked around the border of the foyer to the front door. She opened one of them and peered out at the man standing on the doorstep. Who are you? I have come seeking the Maiden of Winter, mistress to the ice and snow, and mother of the north winds. I am she. The man immediately knelt to one knee. Maiden of winter, mistress to the ice and snow, and mother of the north winds, I have come to offer you my humble service. There is a rumor in my village that if one were to sacrifice their life to you, you would lighten the winter storms and help save someone else's life. I can, but I must refuse. Please, maiden, the village has sent me because half of our people have fallen ill with a disease carried by the cold. I'm willing to give my life if it means the rest of my village can survive. Sivanya's face darkened. The snow started to fall heavier, soaking the man standing out in it. You have come because you have been sent by people desperate to survive, not because you are willing to sacrifice yourself to save a loved one, and you try to represent an entire village with only yourself. I do no favors for people seeking my counsel just to keep your filthy human lives elongated against my winter. But I do not need your bloodthirsty hands dirtying my lands. I do not require you to survive. If you all die in my blizzards, then so be it. She slammed the door and listened to the man start his way back to the village in the heavy snow. She turned to stare up at the sculpture in the center of the foyer. I think she wants to prevent history from repeating itself. Resurrected by Savanya only a few days after his death, Peter stood strong and confident in the center of the foyer, just as bright and happy as he had been when they had first met all those years ago. Give me a hint, Peter, just a small hint, so I can find you. Please. Aw. And that was the heart of winter. I really love this, this main menu, it's so detailed, look at that. Hang on, I'll try to uh, hide myself. Um, let's see. Now you can see the buildings. Well, I can feel my voice starting to get hoarse, so I think I'm going to stop for now. And um, hopefully, let me see my schedule. 
hopefully tomorrow um i'll be able to play the next winter bn jam submission yes tomorrow hopefully i really enjoyed that heart of winter is really nice it um i picked it because um well, first off, it, it interested me, the, the front page, and also it uh, was the first uh, entry that was submitted to the Winter VN Jam. And uh, once again, you can find it on ninebacon.itch.io slash heartofwinter. Uh, or you can find it on the Winter VN Jam uh, page on itch.io. I'm looking through the, the page for it, and it also has a art package, um, assumedly like a like a art book that you can check out as well. And I think with that, I will try to find some one for us to raid. Let's see who is currently live, who we can raid right now. Oh, um, fellow VTuber Yuma is live right now. Um, she's a, uh, she's of the felines. We're going to raid her. I'm not sure what she's playing, but, uh, we'll, we'll see when we get there. Okay, let's start the raid, and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow. Ta-ra!